Sal wants to book me as the opening keynote speaker for his annual leadership conference in Washington, D.C., Friday morning, May 18th. Not only does he want me to open the program, he wants to license my registered trademark, No More Excuses, as the theme for the event. I looked at my calendar, the date was open, and we confirmed it up. About a week or so later, I noticed that some of my personal dates were not on my business calendar. Silly little things like Allison's confirmation, our spring family vacation, and my daughter Jackie's high school graduation. Jackie's graduation was on Thursday evening at 7.30. The speech was on Friday morning at 8 o'clock. And I got to tell you, the only way after Saint Lu out of St. Louis after 7 o'clock at night is on a donkey. <laughs> well, Sal was a friend. I'd worked with him before. We had a great relationship. I figured I'd call him up, explain the situation. Surely he would understand. Sal, how's it going? It's Sam. You know that program Friday morning? I've got this graduation conflict. Could we push it off to the afternoon? Could I do it the following morning? The only thing Sal said to me was, Sam, what about no more excuses? <laughs> so I got off the phone and I started to think about my options. I realized immediately I had two. One, I could call in sick at the last minute, have one of my speaker buddies cover for me. And then I thought, well, Jackie is my third child. <laughs> but then I thought, there's got to be another option. So we got on the phone and we started calling air charter companies to see what was involved in chartering a flight from St. Louis to Washington, D.C. We got several bids. Can you imagine the low cost bidder for a flight from St. Louis to Washington, D.C. The night of May 17th was $10,000. So now I have a $10,000 question. Who am I accountable to? Who am I accountable to? Am I accountable to my client? We have an agreement, we have a contract. We have a relationship in place. Am I accountable to my daughter, my family? This may be my third child, but it's her first graduation. And then I realized there was something else that came into play. What about my accountability to myself, to my values, to my ideals? You see, before we can hold ourselves accountable to anyone else, we must first be accountable to ourself. 7.30 at night, I fought off a parent for a nice seat in the fourth row of the, the arena that the graduation was in. At 9.30, Jackie walked across the stage, received her diploma. We took a few pictures together, and then it was off to Spirit of St. Louis Airport. At 10.15, it was wheels up. The plane was smaller than I had imagined and certainly much lighter. But then, again, so was my wallet. After takeoff, there was a storm in the area and the plane bounced around and the thought occurred to me, maybe it wasn't such a good idea to go with the low cost bidder. <laughs> but things smoothed out and by 2.30 in the morning, I'm slipping between the lily whites in my hotel room in Washington. I get up the next morning and, and deliver my program. You know, it takes self-discipline to live our life with ethics, morality, and integrity. But when we do, we very often achieve what it is that we desire. Successful people don't make excuses when they fail, and they don't accept them from others either. Leaders admit fault. Even our founding father, George Washington, when he was asked, did you chop down the cherry tree, he said, I cannot tell a lie, I did it. And this was unusual for him to tell the truth, because after all, he was a politician. 
Can you imagine that today? Today we have people whose job it is to make excuses. They call them spin doctors. Can you imagine George Washington on Fox News? Mr. President, did you cut down the cherry tree? Well, yes. And no. <laughs> you see, I didn't cut it down as cutting is something one does with a knife. You can cut your finger, but you can't really cut a tree. And since I used my hatchet, the relationship I had with the tree was not a cutting relationship. I would call it more of a chopping relationship. And I did not cut it down as see the stump is still standing. And since that is part of the tree is an alleged claim exaggerated by those people who have some personal vendetta against me. And after all, I was looking for weapons of mass destruction. And let me make this point perfectly clear. I did not inhale. <laughs> Don't we hate it when politicians give us those lame excuses? There. Secret number two. Think and plan strategically. I once had the opportunity to sit with a very successful individual and I asked him, what's your secret to success? He said, Sam, do the right things consistently. Do the right things consistently. So many times we get to the start of the day, we have a legal pad with a list of things to do on there, and we think success is just checking things off. We haven't even taken the time to realize what needs to be on that legal pad. And if you're going to do the right things consistently, you have to take the time to stop and ask, what are my right things? Look at them as daily right things, weekly right things, monthly or annually, but you have to know what your right things are. I love it, man. Next secret. My youngest daughter, Allison, is 17 years old. She has a summer job in a laboratory, and she is assisting in some very critical research. And what they're trying to do is they're trying to identify a specific part of the human genome and attach that to heart defects. Because once they're able to make that connection, they will be able to save millions of lives for our children, our grandchildren, and generations to come. And I asked Allison to share with me the procedure of how they went about doing this. And I only get one question a day. <laughs> so Allison explained to me that they harvest the heart of the mouse, and then they encase it in a block of wax. And they slice that heart into 250 slices. Now, for those of you that don't know this, a mouse's heart is about the size of the exposed piece of lead on a dull pencil. 250 slices. And then they examine each one under a microscope looking for the defects. And they do this over and over and over again. And as she explained the entire process to me, using a vocabulary of which I only third ab understood about half the words, I realized two things. First, in my side of the family, intelligence is generation skipping. <laughs> but second, I realized that there was an incredible amount of precision that went into both the equipment and the process and procedures that were used in that laboratory. And I had to stop and look at myself and look at my business and ask, do I employ that level of precision? Do we create a business model with that degree of precision? If we are going to be successful in a down economy, and position ourselves to move greatly forward as it comes back, we need to plan a campaign in our businesses with the same amount of precision that's used in the laboratory. When you return from this convention, you will have no more excuses. If your business is not where you want it to be, or your life is not where you deserve it to be.